Good morning and welcome to Carloway Church on the Move. Today we're out and about visiting various locations some beautiful spots across the parish beginning here in Delmore. We've got some wonderful scenery in the area so we're going to highlight that today. So with, with beautiful scenery, lovely weather and some uplifting praise, I hope we'll all feel invigorated as if you're taking a gulp of fresh air this morning and out with us. So welcome to this um, this church on the move today and I hope it will be a blessing to you. We're going to begin with a psalm, Psalm 103, but it's a new version and a few recently uh, a tune came to my, my mind and I thought yeah that sounds good so I worked at it and I thought where would it best fit and eventually I came round to deciding that it would fit Psalm 103. So but I had to do a little bit of modification to the metric psalm and uh, I've done that, uh, so we're going to do, sing this psalm, Psalm 103, and uh, I shared it recently both in Ness and in Barris at the Communions, but I think it's time for it to come to my home church, so that's what I'm going to do now. I'll play the melody and then you can join in with me. Oh, bless and magnify, ye glorious 
as hosts of his. He ministers the doom, whatever his pleasure is. Oh, bless the Lord, all works, wherewith the world is stored. In his dominions, everywhere my soul bless God alone. In his dominions, everywhere my soul Now I'd like us to pray a prayer together and it's a psalm that we could recite and make it our congregational prayer and it's Psalm 67. So let's do that with our hearts and with our voices speak it out. Let's recite these words. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine on us so that your ways may be known on the earth, your salvation among all the nations. May the people praise you, Lord. May all the peoples praise you. May the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you rule the peoples with equity and guide the nations of the earth. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. The land yields its harvest. God, our God, blesses us. May God bless us still, so that all the ends of the earth will fear. Amen. That's our prayer for ourselves, for our congregation for our island and we thank God that so far his hand has kept back this pervasive illness and we are in a situation whereby we may escape much of its, uh, its reach. So we thank God for that but we still want to pray that God would bless us and protect us and that we know his covering of grace upon this island and upon each and every member of this church. Amen. Well, I hope you like this first introduction to our scenic tour of the parish today. And that's it for this location. And now we'll move on to the second. See you there. Bye. Welcome, Church. Carlaby Church on Tour. We're here at our second destination today. And as you, as you can well spot, we're here at the Broch and Dune Carlaway. The Broch and Dune Carlaway. And I must hasten to add that we're on the property of our dear friends, Murdo and Jenny, in Harrogate. So we're here to look after your home for the next wee while. But I'm sure you'll be blessed as to know that we're here and making use of this video on your grounds here. A wonderful day. The day started off with quite a lot of fog and mist and I thought, is it going to clear? But it's turned out to be a beautiful day. So I hope everybody can see the beauty of the landscape around us and we'll be showing you some of that later on in the video clip. But this, this building here, I don't know, I'm not a great historian on it, but it dates back to around the first century. Maybe some of you will know better than that. But I want to link it in with the gospel because the gospel was first being preached in its infancy in the first century when this building was first uh, put up. And the apostles and the disciples of the first century, they turned the known world upside down. This is what is recorded often. When they began to preach the gospel, it had such a radical impact on society that it turned the world upside down. It affected huge swathes of the population across the Middle East, across Europe, and eventually through missionaries, it came to the shores of this land. It couldn't be contained, it spread like wildfire. We're just hearing about the, the wildfire down in Dalmore this week, but somebody thought it was, it was an emergency. But it's just the heather being set on fire annually. There was a fire burning. But we might ask ourselves, and I'm asking you today as a church and anyone who's, who's listening in, how much of that fire still burns within you and I as Christians, as the church, for the spreading of the gospel? How much of that zeal that the early Christians had, not just the apostles, but the, the whole church, they had a, a great zeal to spread the good news of salvation. Can we ask, and as we look into our heart, as we look into our Christian and church life, can we see, is there a flame? Is it barely flickering? Is it extinguished? What passion do we have? As an island as well, have we lost the zeal that we, ha that we had in generations past to proclaim, to go out with the gospel? Not to let the, the, the community come to church, but to go out into our community in a sense like what we're doing today is a statement. We're taking the word of God out to the, to the countryside and who, may, who knows who may be looking. But it's a prophetic statement that we want to be 
like uh, zealous Christians who want to go out and share the good news of Christ. So do you, do you have a zeal? Or have you and I, and I, I, I include myself in all these questions, ha have we become complacent as Christians, comfortable with the, with the way things are in church week after week? We have our meetings, and it's from time to time we'll see one or two conversions. And that kind of anesthetizes us to the real need that's are all around us for, to, for us to see. But so often we, we don't. Our eyes are, are dimmed. Our eyes are not, uh, our spiritual eyes are not aware of the great need in every village, in every parish of this island and beyond. And, you know, we, we need to, I trust, to rekindle something of that passion again. And we, we may not be like the pig, our ancestor from way back who, who worshipped pagan gods. But may, maybe we've substituted modern gods of luxury and comfort and ease. And they've, they've turned our heart into stone. And I hope you don't offend it by that. But we have to look at our hearts and say, what is the condition of my heart? Is it, is it, is it hard towards uh, going out with the gospel and sharing it? Now, we're in a, a global health situation and we're very conscious of the vulnerability of mankind health-wise and uh, great needs but do we have any sense of awareness of the spiritual needs of mankind or are we solely focused on the temporal and the physical well-being we are we happy to let the world go by us in our small corner we're not doing anything proactive for the gospel for the church and for the cause of Christ so will you and I emerge from this season when it's finally over? Will we emerge from it untouched, in a sense, with compassion for our fellow human beings, our fellow island residents, only to be relieved to get back to normal? Back to normal. Well, you know, maybe the world, and including us here in Lewis, will never be the same again. Maybe there'll be, it'll have left an impression, a mark upon us, and upon a whole way of life that will be a residue. And it's not a negative thing. Things will change. And we, we ourselves will, will be changed as a result. And so we're not going to come out of this the same as, as we were before. We will find new ways of doing church and of being church in a relevant way. And again, I'm saying that this coming out here today is in a measure a statement of what we probably need to do and pray that God will urge us to go out to the communities, preach the gospel that the apostles and the disciples uh, preach so fervently. Now we're not looking to build a monument like the Broch, which will last for centuries. We're not looking to do that. But we're looking to build an enduring legacy to this community, to this island, and to our nation. We're building something whose builder and maker is God, a spiritual a spiritual edifice that will stand out, that will that will last a long time. Now this site, as you can clearly see, it's got scaffolding all around it, and it's it's been like this for many months. I'm not sure, maybe even a year. There's some structural damage, some structural work that needs to be rectified, and, and so it's been closed down. And one of the main tourist attractions is, is shut down. It's uh, no one can visit, and in a sense, that's like our, that's like church just now. There's not scaffolding on it, but it's shut down. People can't visit. People can't come and engage and, and enjoy being uh, being there. There's a temporary scaffolding around all our churches. And but we mustn't become like the church, like this edifice here. It's all finished, doing nothing until it opens again. We as a church, as a Christian people, need to do something. We're not going to wait until everything is repaired. We need to to be proactive, creative, have an energy to build something, even though we're restricted by the, what's happening with us uh, as, a, as a nation and as a world. So can we today reflect on that? If the church wasn't here, well, would we still have a zeal to share the gospel with Christ? And you know, maybe this situation is going to thrust us out of our comfort zone, of our complacency, of our Yes, apathy, and I, I, I see that in my own heart. That God would stir us to see beyond the walls and to see that there is a people out there 
who need to hear the good news. And that's the challenge I, I I'm going to leave with you today. That we would fan into flame, and ask God to fan into flame a zeal for the gospel that will again turn our island and our nation upside down. And believe me, God has a plan for us. God does not have a blank sheet in front of him for the church. He has a plan for us. And I believe we will come to know that in the coming weeks. And I have, I have a plan too. We'll see if it fits in with God's will. Something exciting that God wants to do differently for us as a church in Carloway, including the whole parish. So keep, uh, keep watching for signs of that. So that's my word to us today. And uh, the message that the first Christians were proclaiming was, there is a Redeemer. Jesus, God's own Son. He was the Messiah, the Christ. And that's what we're going to sing to, to conclude with. And remember the, 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 the part that says, God has left His Spirit for the work to continue until the work on earth is done. So we have a, a work to do, church. We just don't down tools. We have a work to do. And we, we are going to get on with it. Right here. There is our Redeemer, God's Jesus. There is a Redeemer, Jesus. third and final destination on this glorious day. It's been such a joy to be out and about, sharing the word, singing, and just enjoying the beauty of our island. So we've come to one of the most noble places in the whole world. People from everywhere have heard of the Calvary Storms. And there's a specific reason I've, I've chosen this place uh, that will fit in with our final scene and the text today. This goes back 2,000 plus years BC, way, way beyond what we saw in the Brock, which is just 
21st century. And uh, if you've done any research at all, you know that there's multitudes of myths and legends and fanciful stories about this place and who they were and the origin of them. But one of them I kind of like for today is that the stones here are actually men who were turned into stone because they refused to convert to Christianity. Can you hear that one? I'll say it again because it's so amazing. The stones here are actually men. Now, there is a place maybe for this, as I think about it, with Lot's wife being turned into a pillar himself. But that men from this community way, way back uh, refused to accept the, the Christianity. But of course, uh, that's just a fear. But what I want to look at, just for a few moments here today as we finish, the promise of the gospel is that God will turn the heart of stone into a heart of flesh. He will break down all the human resistance of mind and will and intellect and reason against his will until he softens and touches the heart. And the promise that Ezekiel the prophet gave was that God would change your hearts from a heart of stone to a heart of flesh, soft, tender and malleable. And the gospel of Christ's love does that. It penetrates through the hard places of mankind's hearts. We were all constantly resisting the word of God, resisting the Christian gospel. But bit by bit, that word penetrated us and got through and touched our hard hearts and turned them from stone into flesh. So we're very grateful to God. This is the promise that is in God's word. And as I again on the theme church that we want to see our communities transformed where your neighbours are like that stone that you mentioned the gospel, it will just bounce off a little bit of hard heart. But God is in the business, He's always been in the business of changing men's hearts. And that's our challenge. As we preach the gospel, as we love our neighbours, as we pray for our communities, bit by bit, the barriers and blockages can be wilted down. And the gospel of love and forgiveness will prevail and hearts will return to flesh. And we're going to finish with the psalm which says this, the, the verse that stands out in Psalm 40. He took me from a fearful pit and from the mighty clay, and on a rock he set my feet, establishing my way. And that rock is Christ Jesus. As the scripture says, See, I lay in Zion a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. So church, friends who are watching this video today, our eyes are upon this stone, this rock, Christ Jesus, today. So we'll now sing Psalm 40, verses 1 to 5, and then the last verse, verse 16. <laughs>
friends today. Hope you've enjoyed the journey. It's been an exciting journey for Colum and I today. We've been blessed in preparing this for you. So we look forward to meeting you online tomorrow, 11 o'clock. Let's try and all be there at 11 if possible. And let's end with just a short word of prayer and benediction. Our gracious God, we bless you for the wonder and the beauty of life that we are experiencing today. We thank you that you have come in your, in your wonder and splendor to our hearts most of all. We thank you that our eyes look out and see the wonder of creation, the beauty that works in our hands. We pray today, O oh Lord, that that which you've given us, the works of our hands, the preaching, the singing, the presenting of it, will be a blessing to those who see it, that it will touch hearts, that it will draw everyone closer to Christ, and it will cause our hearts to rejoice in thy goodness. And thou, with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Rest and abide with each and every one of you this day and forevermore. Amen.